Alrighty, traders, welcome to our weekly webinar. Thank you guys so much for being here. Today is Sunday, September 10th, 2017. Uh, time is absolutely flying by this year. I can't believe we're already almost halfway through September. It seems like September just started. Um, pretty intense, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you guys that are new, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. My name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. Um, I've been trading Forex for four years, two of those years professionally and full time, and I run a uh, trading group. So if, if you guys, I, I run this, I do this weekly webinar every single Sunday for free, or I try to do it at, at, at least every single Sunday. You know, some Sundays I'm not able to, depending on if I'm traveling or just not able to make it, but mostly every single Sunday I, I jump on here for about half an hour and discuss my bias and my opinion on pretty much my weekly outlook on these nine uh currencies over here to the right and as well as the dollar index a couple other things like that um, I do want to just give you a, everybody that is new tuning in a warm welcome and I do just want to give you guys a disclaimer as well if you guys are new to these weekly webinars this analysis is based on higher time frames okay these this analysis that we're gonna be looking at um, you really won't see me drop down below anything lower than the four hour all right I like to stick to the daily I like to stick to the weekly and the four hour when I do my trading so this is uh, you know it is a weekly analysis. Keep in mind, okay. So if I'm if I'm telling you guys my bias on a pair of you know I think I think a pair could do this or I think a pair could do that, um, it does not necessarily mean that I think that's going to happen in the next 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours. It might not be until Thursday. It might not even be this week that 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 this type of movement happens. But this is just my overall bias, okay. Um, based on my track record on my verified my FX book, I have about an 80% win rate. So keep in mind, all traders do have their losses, but um, you know, I'd like to think I'm a somewhat accurate trader. So do keep in mind, you know, everything with a grain of salt, you know, I'm not, I'm not a 100% trader. I don't really know anybody that is a 100% accurate trader. So my analysis could be wrong at times, but if you have been following along for the past couple of weeks, or you've been following, I've been doing these webinars for over a year now. Um, my analysis is generally, you know, biased to, uh, you know, I'd say about 70% of the time we're about right on what happens in the markets. So let's go ahead and get started. If you guys are new, I like to start with the economic calendar. If you guys don't know what this is, you definitely want to know what the economic calendar is. Pretty light to start off the week. We don't really have a whole lot of high impact news. We have some GBP CPI on, on Tuesday. We've got a fair amount of news on Wednesday. We have some Australian dollar news, some US dollar news. Um, Thursday is actually a pretty big uh, day for the US dollar and the pound. Uh, we have interest rate decision on the pound. It looks like they're um, planning on keeping interest rates the same. And then we also have a bunch of CPI being released for the US dollar um, Thursday morning as well. So Thursday morning is definitely going to be our key risk event or our key risk, um, you know, key risk day for the week. So definitely uh, I wouldn't recommend doing any trading Thursday morning or at least not trading any uh, pound crosses or any US dollar crosses. Um, but moving into the technical analysis, um, also, just so you guys know, if you do enjoy this, um, please go ahead and check out our website, positivetraders.us. We also have a Facebook page you can go like. You can also um, add me on Facebook. I sometimes will post little things through there, but as long as you're in my Telegram, I like to post all my free trade ideas in there. And then, of course, if you're in the premium group, you have access to our Slack for my signals, my trade copy, or what my daily webinars, that type of thing. Um, so I do this free webinar just about every Sunday, and then I do a daily webinar Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for all my premium members. But let's go ahead and look at the look at the charts, guys. Um, we're gonna start off with gold and run down, run run our way down. Now, gold made some uh, the market a lot a lot of different markets made some incredible moves last week. We saw gold actually hit the thirteen fifty level. I'll go ahead and pull out my annotator. We we saw it break hit hit the thirteen fifty level. Now I tell I told you guys this before, but since there are a lot of new people, I do want to say this again. Um, when you guys are, if you do trade gold, if you analyze gold, um, one big thing I recommend is every $50 on gold. So like 1350, 1300, you know, put it, at, you know, down at 1250 as well. I don't have a line at 1250 cause we're all, you know, almost a hundred dollars, um, higher than that level right now. So I usually look at the the levels that were around are the clo the two closest fifty dollar levels, and make sure you guys have those levels. These are definitely psychological levels of support and resistance. The markets react very um, well to these areas. A very good example is just um, you know, a good example is right here with gold. You can see in the past we saw a rejection around the thirteen hundred level, and then we can also see when we actually finally broke through the thirteen hundred level, we actually came back down to retest it 
um, right, right in Nick, the 1300 and then move up. And we're now that we've broken through or we've seen some, uh, the 1350 level reached, we have seen a little bit of resistance. We can obviously see the gar uh, the markets gapped almost $10 lower. So something to keep in mind this week, I will tell you guys my overall bias this week, the way it looks is I think this could potentially be a pullback week. Um, we have been seeing for the past couple of weeks, we've been seeing a lot of weakness on the dollar index. Okay. Um, if you guys don't use the DXY, the, the U S dollar index, I highly recommend you guys incorporate it into your trading analysis. It's vi at least if you trade a lot of U S dollar pairs, if you notice one thing in common with all these pairs that I trade and I only trade these nine pairs, um, they all have the U.S. dollar in them except for pound yen. But the nice thing is this pound yen has a negative correlation to gold. So as long as I know, and then gold and the dollar have a negative correlation. So pretty much as long as I know where the dollar is going, I know where gold is going. And then if I know where gold is going, I have a pretty good idea where pound yen is going. So I'm a big correlation trader as well, you know, knowing the way um, the currencies correlate or the different pairs correlate to each other is a huge is very very beneficial in the markets but um, if you guys have followed along with my past couple webinars let me actually delete this since we have broken through there um, ever since on the weekly ever since we broke through this multi multi year support that you guys can see right here this 9321 level um, I've been pretty bearish on the dollar we've been looking at selling the dollar um, for quite a while now and I'm still interested in a weaker dollar but I think that there could be a little bit of a pullback this week potentially we could be seeing um, it reaching um, some previous levels of support potentially before continuing to drop lower although you know definitely keep in mind that the weekly candle did close very bearish for the dollar um, the dollar is very weak we saw unemployment re we saw an unemployment report that was absolutely horrible um, for the dollar last week we saw almost if we actually look at just a second, if we actually look at it, guys, so you guys can see it. Last week, I believe we saw almost 300,000 um, filed for unemployment last month. So right here, yeah, on Wednesday, I believe, no, Thursday, we saw the U.S. dollar unemployment claims come in way worse than expected. Um, that was one of the huge things that made the dollar weaken um, last week, as well as a couple other factors, definitely tensions with North Korea, that type of thing going on. So uh, fund both fundamentally, and also from a technical standpoint, seeing that the dollar index broke this major, major level of support. Um, I am expecting you know, more long-term weakness in the dollar, but this week in particular, we may see a pullback. So be watching for um, pullbacks on the dollar. Um, it looks a little bit cleaner on Euro USD. So Euro USD looks pretty nice right now. You guys can see that Friday gave us a nice exhaustion candle um, at previous highs. So if we actually go ahead and mark off our extension level, if we actually mark this off, this is one of our targets that we had in the premium group. If you guys, obviously in, your, in the premium group, we took this trade. If you, if you followed, I think I posted something in Telegram about this, but um, we bought Euro USD actually down in this area and we were long-term targeting the 161.8 retrace or extension level, excuse me, after this channel broke, after we saw this channel break. Very, very simple, clean price action, guys. And this, I do not recommend trading with indicators. Learning price action and learning how to read the markets in the, in the live moving charts is going to help you in pretty much any market condition. You might find an indicator that works, but you might find out that you know it works only for a couple months and then after a little while down the road starts not working and that's usually how indicators work um, and just to put it simply if there was an indicator there was some sort of indicator setting that worked everybody would be millionaires everybody would make money in forex and so it's really not that simple as just putting in an indicator and, and relying on an indicator to tell you when to buy or sell price action is king guys if you can learn to read price action that is what's king so we see this descending channel that we actually broke out of a very clean retest and then um, went a little bit bullish bullish flag right here and then broke up to the upside so we were expecting this we traded this and last week uh, you know I, I did post this in telegram as well so now that we've broken out and we've actually found some support right here we found this support level um, the support trend line has been very, very strong. I actually, if you guys can go back in Telegram and see exactly what I wrote, what, right? I posted a screenshot when price was right around this area, and I said if we could see a sustained break above the 119.10 level, so right around this this red line, that we would be expecting some a weaker dollar. We'd be expecting more upside on euro dollar, which is a, a weaker U.S. dollar, and we saw just that. Now, we did come up to make a double top on the four-hour, 
and on the daily we have this exhaustion candle now i am not forgetting guys definitely if you look at this pair on the weekly we do have a very big bullish engulfing candle just like we have that um, bearish engulfing candle on the dollar index so uh, yes i am very aware that on the weekly time frame it does look quite bullish how it, on the lower i mean obviously on the daily it still is bullish we're in a very major uptrend but just just from the way I, it's hard to explain guys i've been I've been literally staring at charts for four years and I've have I've had thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of just understanding the way the markets move. So it's a little bit difficult to explain exactly why I think there is going to be a pullback in the markets this week, but um, it has a lot to do with, um, with the targets that we've already reached. All right. Seeing that we've we've already reached our extension level so quickly. You know, I, I don't think I was expecting price to go up into the 120 level so quickly um, as fast as we did last week, especially um, on Thursday. We saw a huge, huge um, incline in Euro USD, a huge climb in it because of that weak unemployment report, which was definitely the catalyst for a higher Euro USD. But um, I think this week, just based on the technicals, I think that we could see a pullback on the dollar index. Um, which would send the euro dollar down. If you guys can't tell, dollar index, euro dollar, they do the exact opposite of each other. So it's a very beautiful gauge to help you with your analysis. Um, USD Swiss franc. Let's go ahead and look at USD Swiss franc for a moment. If we throw it on the four hour, we are at, these are my levels, guys. These green boxes that I put on my on my charts are essentially just levels. I don't have, I usually don't just have one line. Sometimes you will see on my charts, I do have just one line and it's not a green box, but for the most part, usually I like zones. I like zones more than, you know, just defining one specific level of price. So I do like zones and here's what we're at right now, guys. Let me just backtrack for two seconds is my bias is going to be to the dollar strengthening throughout the week. I think that we could be seeing the pullback happening. However, if we do see Monday and Tuesday quite bearish for the dollar. So, you know, for instance, the USD Swiss franc, if we do see the support broken, then we do see a retest, then we probably will go lower. But ultimately, like if we see a, if, if this daily candle, we see a bullish engulfing candle, something like this, then expect some sort of um, retracement up to previous support levels, which will now act as resistance levels on this type of pair. And then same with the dollar index. It looks very, if you guys can't tell, obviously the dollar index is the opposite of Euro USD. And then the dollar index pretty much follows USD Swiss franc. So USD Swiss franc and Euro USD have a opposite correlation to each other. Um, so looking at, and same thing with Euro USD, you know, just to, just to give you guys, you know, finish off the analysis. If we do pull back, we're probably going to pull back down to this trend line and then do something in this area, whether that's a break and a retest to continue lower. Um, but if we do continue to see a weaker dollar and, and we just see the dollar continue to weaken and it's, it's been getting a, it's getting a beat, been getting a beating since the beginning of this year, guys, um, ex, you know, then we would probably see a new highs made some sort of bounce off of previous resistance and then, um, price moving up higher. So there's, these are definitely two alternate scenarios, but just the way, the way I can see the charts, it looks like we may be having some sort of pullback in the markets this week. Um, pound dollar. I just want to take a second and talk about pound dollar. This has been absolutely crazy. I, I showed something like this. I put this out on my trading view a while back last week. Um, you know, I said option A or option B. We really didn't exactly see option A or B follow out, although we did see this ascending wedge that we were in break to the top side. Um, I was looking for a bet, a little bit bigger retest. All right, I was hoping for a nicer retest. So here's that wedge right here on the four hour. Um, I was hoping to see when it did break, you know, maybe see a little bit more of a retest somewhere into this zone before buying. So this was a missed opportunity because it didn't pull back um, as far as we wanted to and give us that retest of this, you know, of the resistance of this wedge. But um, it's okay. You know, it, it moved without us, but we caught so much, so many pips last week in the premium group. We didn't have a single losing trade last week. Um, yeah, we didn't have a single, that, that's actually our third week in the premium group without a single losing trade. So it's been three weeks of straight wins. Doesn't mean that it's always going to be like that, but we are on a very nice run right now. Um, pound dollar overall, it just looks like it could be making a pullback as well. It made some very big strides to the upside. Um, I wouldn't recommend trading pound dollar right now. I think uh, my eyes are going to be more focused on Euro USD. And then there's a couple other pairs we're going to look at. Um, 
pound yen. This is something I am very interested in trading. Okay. So if you guys have your trading journals out, you guys are waiting for, you know, whatever, like a free trade or however you would call it. Um, this is definitely one that I'm very interested in. All right. So just to kind of break down why there's this trade right here, this is actually a trade we took in the premium group last week. And actually, if you guys were here, you guys can see we actually put a sell stop on pound yen within, within like 10 minutes of me giving out the sell stop, it hit. And then within two hours of that trade, it had dropped, um, what is that, like 54 pips. So perfect trade right right down to our target and then uh, reversed into Friday, which is definitely expected. Fridays are definitely super crazy. But going into this week, I am very interested in a bullish pound yen. Um, we have a couple different setups. I'm going to delete that now, but we have a couple different um, technical levels to keep in mind. We have this obvious, very, very significant resistance. So if we see some sort of like bounce off of this, or I'm sorry, some break and then a bounce off of it, we will definitely probably be heading up to the underside of this trend line. And just so you guys can see where this trend line comes into play, this is on the daily, I believe. Yes. All right. This is on the daily. Here is our support, support, support. We broke it. We actually retested that uh, support. Now resistance dropped. And then um, now we're climbing back up higher. There's also another technical level I want to point out or a technical formation I want to point out. We definitely have a, uh, a head and sh an inverted. Oh, well, that's not a, that's not what I was looking for. Hold on guys. That's not what I was looking for looking for the head and shoulders. Um, we definitely have an inverted head and shoulders on this pair. So here is definitely clearly our neckline also. So this is a very nice technical um, technical trade. And in the way you guys trade head and shoulders, it's very simple. I always see the one, I just want to take this moment to educate you guys. I always, Anytime you see a head and shoulders, guys, whether it's inverted or just a normal head and shoulders, Every single time I see on social media, people saying to either like, you know, if this was flipped up like a normal head and shoulders, I, I see people saying to sell at the top of the um, right shoulder. Or in this case, if it's inverted, I see, I see people saying, tell, telling people to buy at the top or I guess at the bottom of the right shoulder. And that's not the way to trade a head and shoulders, guys, because that there's no guarantee that this, this is going to move up. Although in this case it did to complete the formation, um, it could have just dropped. Okay. So the, the correct way to trade a head and shoulders is once the formation is actually complete, once you actually have that right shoulder completed, once it has completed, like it has right now, you wait for a break of the neckline and generally a retest. Okay. So it breaks the neckline. Then you usually wait for a retest and then you, you know, in this situation buy because it's inverted or if it was flipped upside down, you'd be selling on a break of the neckline, a break and retest of the neckline. So definitely be very careful. What does the red line mean? I think if you were just watching that covered it, I think you might've asked that. Um, if I think you, you, you might've asked that before I showed it. So hopefully that clarifies it. Um, if not, I'll just show you very quickly one more time. This is on the daily, this red line, this descending red line, this is just a very, very huge, huge trend line. Um, it's, I don't even know. It's just, it's just on my charts. I'll probably go ahead and end up deleting it. Um, that was there when price was still descending. So, um, but you guys can see definitely like my analysis for the most part is, uh, on point, you know, I said right down here, look for continuation of pound strength and downside on this pair. If we go ahead and play it, you can see from that point where we actually broke that trend line. And this is how powerful keeping things simple and just using, you know, one and here, here's one thing guys, trend lines only on high time frames. Okay. Don't mess with trend lines on the one hour. Don't trust, don't mess with trend lines on the 30 minute, the 15 minute. I don't even trade on the 15 minute, the 30 minute, or even the one hour. Really? I will occasionally, uh, look to perfect my entries or be a little bit more accurate with my entries that I have analysis based on higher time frames, like the four hour or the daily. I'll use the one hour if I see, you know, maybe like a nice bull flag, bear flag to pinpoint accuracy with my trades, but I don't actually build um, my full analysis and take trades based off the lower time frames. I stick to the daily, the four hour, and the um and the weekly. Um, so let's go ahead and move to dollar yen. Um also, guys, stick with me until the end. Of very, I, I really would appreciate it, guys. At the very end, I'm going to take like 30 seconds and show you guys how 
every single one of you guys, whether you join my group or not, you know, you don't have to, this isn't some pitch to join my group. I, I genuinely want to give you guys free weekly outlooks so you guys can, so I can help you guys out in the markets. But at the end, I want to show how every single one of you guys here, no matter what group you're in, as long as you're, you know, diligently learning and trading Forex, how you can be a multi, multi-millionaire within um, five to 10 years of, of trading Forex. So let's go ahead and look at uh, US, USD Jappy, okay, dollar yen. Um, if you guys haven't been able to tell right now, obviously my bias is towards a stronger dollar this week. So I am going to be expecting a little bit of a pullback on dollar yen. So I am going to be bullish on dollar yen. Um, I am expecting it to break this level, probably make some sort of bounce around the 108.40 level and then maybe um, come back up to the 109, 110 level. So definitely um, some pips to make on this trade. Um, but we are and, and again, I do recognize that we have some very bearish days leading up to today. You know, Friday and Thursday were very bearish for dollar yen. We're in, my, my bias is still overall, my long-term bias is still overall to the downside, guys. Let me be very clear. As I still think overall the dollar is going to continue to weaken. So let me be very clear. Now, that when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, over the next two, three, four weeks, a couple months, uh, you know, even going into 2018, that the dollar will continue to weaken, in my opinion. But... For this week in particular, I think it could be one of those pullback weeks, um, which the markets like to do. So I'm going to be, re I don't do a lot of trading on Sunday guys, just because they are, um, I call them kind of like quote unquote trap days. I'm just not a big fan of trading them. So I would definitely recommend waiting until the Sunday close. Occasionally, if there is a, a perfect setup, everything's working really well, we will take a trade on Sundays. But for the most part, I like to see where the Sunday daily candle closes in about 24 hours and then go from there taking trades. You know, I think the, the best days to trade, I think are like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, Thursday is not bad to trade. Friday, definitely not the best day to trade. But um, yeah, that is that. Um, so looking at AUD USD. Um, I do think that we shouldn't really touch this pair right now. It did break off of, I'll kind of give you guys a breakdown of all these lines. So this trend line actually pulls back into late 2013. So this is a multi-year trend line that has held, but we did break through it. Um, although let's look at that price action on Friday. Look at that ginormous exhaustion candle. Um, that is from temporary dollar strength. So this may be a little confusing to some, if you guys look at it, um, also, if you guys have been following along with my analysis, I said ever since we broke this channel down in this area, I was expecting this area to actually get reached. And sure enough, it did get reached. So or we did reach that zone. So um, I think that there will be downside on this pair. But because we are above this multi-year trend line, even though we have this exhaustion candle, um, I'm, I'm not interested in trading this pair. I think we should sit on the sidelines. Let's look at trades like dollar yen, where the price action is a little bit cleaner. You know, it's very simple. We just wait for it to break. Um, you know, these, we, we, we just wait for it to break like this level, like this bounce off of it and then continue moving up higher, just like we do with pound yen and, uh, Euro dollar to the downside, you know, what we're looking for. So let's not touch AUD USD. NZD USD is also another one that is, um, I wouldn't touch either. Uh, we are above a trend line as well. We, it, this isn't quite multi-year, a, a multi-year trend line. This just goes back to middle of 2016. So it is, I mean, it is a one year trend line, but it's not, it's not super crazy. If that makes sense, it doesn't go back until like 2013, like the AUD USD does. Um, but overall, I think that the dollar will continue to gain strength. So don't be surprised guys. If something like this was to happen, don't be surprised if we see NZD USD come back to come back underneath this trend line, maybe bounce off and then fall finally down to um, in, in between the 70 and the 71 region. Um, check question, the gaps always don't close. Correct, yeah, Alex, uh, you asked something about gaps. Yes, gaps don't always close. Um, so I definitely, definitely do not recommend to just, guys, the worst thing you can do is just like when the market's open, like as a, as a new trader, don't, don't trade groups that are, or don't follow groups that are like, Oh my gosh, you know, this, 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 this pair gapped, you know, 30 pips, uh, you know, to the downside. So I automatically buy, like they don't always close guys. Look at gold. Per gold is a perfect example. Um, now gold did eventually spike down a little bit to close, but it didn't, we didn't get any, we didn't get to uh, officially closing. If that makes sense. Like we didn't see a candle actually with strong conviction close. So, you know, that, that technically is a gap closing if you will, but um, still, I don't think it's smart to, you know, I mean, even look back here, here's a gap that opened and look how, look how high it went before just closing just a tiny little gap. 
All right. So these are just examples in the markets where, you know, gaps sometimes do close. They have a very high chance of closing, but how much drawdown are you going to go into? How, how long are you going to have to hold that trade um, before it does end up closing is the question. Um, USD CAD, a huge one, guys. USD CAD, if you guys have followed my analysis, this is really awesome because I'm really happy. You know, I've, I see everybody j jumping on the bearish USD CAD uh, bandwagon last week. Everybody is starting to say, you know, in this area to sell you at USD CAD. If you guys have been following my weekly analysis, ever since we saw this super simple formation, a nice bearish engulfing candle on a... Uh, on a major downtrend, ever since we saw this candle formation, I've been bearish USD CAD and it finally reached our target. Um, let's put it on the daily and you guys can see right here. So I'll just redraw it so some of you guys can see how I'm drawing it from the low to the high of this just little swing pullback. Uh, we have our extension level once again, kind of like Euro USD, but the opposite, you know, instead of it, it going up to that level, it went down to our extension level. Um, and, you know, Friday, we saw a little bit of a bullish candle, you know, kind of reject after seven days, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's only six days. After six days of seeing USD CAD drop, we saw our first day of, of, uh, of the bulls taking control of the buyers taking control. Granted, it wasn't a giant, giant blue candle, but I still am biased to more upside. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, long-term bias to more downside on USD CAD. If you guys remember, um, I'll just quickly throw it on the weekly. Just very quickly, I've shown this so many times. This is probably going to be one of the last times I show this. Is this drop right here is 2,000 pips? This is on the weekly time frame. Okay, we had this huge, huge consolidation for over a year on USD CAD, and we finally broke it earlier in the year. Okay, we broke this in in uh, late June, early July. We broke through the zone, and so if we measure 2,000 pips down from the break, you guys can see there's still a long ways to go on this pair. So. Um, again, with, with all the pairs that I'm trading, all the pairs that I'm looking at, I do expect dollar, the dollar to continue to weaken long-term. Definitely. I think that the dollar is still going to continue. It's, it's very, very bearish. I mean, you just look at the dollar index since the beginning of this year, it's been in a downtrend, but you know, don't forget about like these, these types of weeks guys, you know, these weeks where it, it made a pullback, you know, these weeks where it made a pullback, you know, these weeks where, you know, not necessarily a pullback, but it kind of, you know, hesitated a little bit kind of like this area right here, made a pullback right here. So just because I'm bearish on the dollar doesn't mean we can't have a week where, you know, it pops up a little bit before continuing to fall. So um, pretty much guys, you know, that that's my analysis for the week. I apologize if it's not the most, I know last week's a little bit more in depth, but um, you know, definitely watching pound yen this week. I think this is a huge, huge opportunity to the upside if we do see this neckline broken. So I'd like to definitely see a a break of this neckline and then a retest and a continued buy. Um, for some of you guys that missed it, I'll just put it one more time. There is that um, inverted head and shoulders that we see right there. So if we see this neckline broken in a retest, it could continue to the bottom side of this channel. And so that, that alone right here, one trade right here can yield you, you know, a hundred, 200 pips, a lot of different scalping opportunities. If you're scalping a nice swing trade opportunity, if you're swinging it um, and Euro USD, definitely we, we might, if we do see, upside on pound yen. And that's, that's kind of where I'm going with the correlations guys, because if we see pound yen go up, okay, if we see pound yen go up, then we're going to see gold go down because they have such a strong negative correlation where if we see pound yen go up, we're going to see us dollar yen, USD Japi also go up. And if we see both of those pairs go up, we're going to see gold go down. And if gold goes down, that means Euro USD goes down also. And if we see both of those go down, then that just means overall that the dollar is gaining strength. So if that better explains why I was saying I, it's hard for me to explain why I think that the dollar is going to make a pullback, that's probably my best um, explanation of why I think that, um, you know, and, and that's the beauty of understanding correlations. And that's why, you know, some people ask me, why do I only trade the nine pairs that I do? That's a perfect example of the nine, because I know these nine pairs like the back of my hand. I know what one is, how one is going to correlate to another. So, um, risk reward for gap trades are pretty crappy, man. He says, definitely. All right, guys. So stay with me on this. I want to show you guys one thing very, very quickly. So you guys can see how powerful Forex is. Okay. So please, like I promise if you guys have ever just taken five minutes to listen to one person or not even five minutes, like two minutes to listen to one person in Forex, like this is the time I'm going to give you guys right now, the secret sauce, the secret formula of how you can succeed long-term in Forex. And 
I know you probably have heard it before, but I want you guys to visually see this. So this is the secret to long-term success in Forex. This is, the, this is how you see success in Forex is you make sure that you have a good, um, a good risk to reward ratio. So very quickly, I just want to show you guys this. Okay. So here we go. Take a whiteboard very quickly. So follow along, watch the replay. If this is too fast, cause I only have a few minutes guys. All right. 10 trades. All right. 10 trades. You take 10 trades. All right. Out of 10 of those trades, if you win five and you lose five. Okay. So 50% win ratio. So even, even not the best win ratio to some people, but I'm going to show you guys in every single trade that you take, you risk 2% to make 4%. That means that your stop loss hits at 2% or your take profit hits at 4% or better. Okay. Using this exact same analysis, if you win five and you win 4% on all five of those, that is a 20% gain plus 20%. Now, if you, if you lose five and you lose 2% on each of those, then that's a negative 10%. All right. So look at this guys at a 50% win ratio, you are still gaining 10% on only 10 trades. So this is the sauce right here, guys. This is the secret is your risk to reward ratio in your risk management. All right. Some of you guys are out there risking 50% of your account, 30% of your account, super over leveraging your trades and you will always blow your account. You'll always end up losing. So so let's take this, this 10% and let's just throw this in a compounding calculator. If you take a thousand dollars guys and you grow at 10% per month, let's just take 60 months. All right. This represents five years. If you calculate this, that is, that is $304,481 and Oh, I'm sorry guys. Let me go back. I don't think you guys could see that for a second. All right. Some of the best traders have a win rate of about 25%. Exactly. Yeah. It's not about, it's not about, um, your pips that you make. It's about your percentage that you can gain per month. So $1,000 balance, 10% per month for 60 months. You calculate that the result is $304,481 and 64 cents. So yes, in five years, you can take a thousand dollars to over $300,000 with only making 10% per month, you know? So this is, this is incredible. The power of compounding. Now let's take, let's just do 10 years very quickly. Okay. This is 120 months. 10 times 12 is 120. Yes, guys, that is 92 million seven hundred and nine thousand and sixty eight dollars all right so this is just to show you guys that if you guys are following these groups that you know that in, in or your your mindset is that you have to take a thousand dollars and and grow it a hundred percent in a month you have to take that thousand dollars and grow it to ten thousand dollars in a month you will always end up losing money you always end up blowing your account because to do that to get those incredible types of returns you have to have some very high risk to reward or you have to have some very high risk associated with your trades if you lose if you use low risk but every single trade you have have a good risk to reward ratio, which that's the key. Again, it goes back to what I just showed you guys on the whiteboard. As long as you risk 2% to make 4%, you will always end up on top because, you know, even the worst traders out there are still have a 50% win rate ratio can still win four out of 10 trades, five out of 10 trades. And you're still in the, in the, in the, in the positive Amir says, LOL, them ones promising 100% every five minutes. Yeah, guys, those, those are all shams. They're all scams out there that are offering you those kinds of returns. So follow somebody with a, a verified my FX book. You know, I can show you guys, obviously, if you don't have my, my FX or you, if you don't, don't, don't know how to see my, my FX book, I can send you the link, but you guys can see right here. These are the types of gains that we're giving people. Okay. So this is, this is a trade copy. You can connect your account to my account and it takes the exact same trades that I take. So um, we're up 44% right now since March. Um, draw, drawdown is very low. You guys can go and look at my drawdown history. Very, very low drawdown. I don't, I, you guys don't see on here, you know, the account going negative 50%, negative 60%, very, very low drawdown. So I just want to show you guys that very quickly. So um, I'm going to wrap this up here. If you guys have any questions or this analysis helped you, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and drop a like, drop a comment, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll see you guys next on next week's weekly webinar. If you're in telegram, make sure you are, I'll be dropping free trade ideas throughout the week, but I appreciate you guys this time. Have a very safe trading week and, uh, I will see you guys throughout the week. Have a great week guys. See y'all later.